Ikigai driven, follow your passion. Oh my god, 600 horsepower! <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you into my kitchen to show you how to cook. Say what? Just kidding. <laughs> We're planning to put this wrist pin through the piston and rod. So I'm gonna show you guys how to install this wrist pin. What we have here are Carrillo pistons. These are the OEM wrist pins. This is an upgraded wrist pin. You can see that the sidewalls are bigger. We have some lint-free towels, some brake clean, assembly lube, and we have our BC connecting rod. Your BC connecting rods. These pistons are 10 to 1 compressions. This is a H beam rod for boost. All right, let's get it. All right, we're gonna do a dry pass. These wrist pins come pre lubricated, that just helps prevent surface erosion. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a dry fit just to see if these fall through. Oh. And they are buttery smooth already. Perfect. So the hardest part in installing this wrist pin, I also wanna check this side. Buttery smooth, buttery smooth as well. All right, the hardest part in this install is installing these circlips. You want to make sure you're able to put it into this ring without nicking anything. This is a new piston, however, I'm still going to clean the piston just to make sure there's nothing in them. So you want to start the wrist pin in this circle right here. And then just work its way in. Okay, perfect. Now, what you wanna do is take one of your wrist pins. Um, I'm t using the OEM one, the new OEM one. You can use any old wrist pin. Take the wrist pin, put it into the piston. This way, we, want, we can make sure that the circ clip that we just put in is square and it's actually in the groove. You wanna make sure so the wrist pin will force it into place or to make sure it's in place. You want to do it on both sides just to make sure that the circ clip has seated properly. So now we're putting this assembly lube inside the wrist pin. And you want to be pretty generous with this assembly lube. Make sure it's all over the connecting rod and the wrist pin. Now when you look at this piston, the deeper grooves are the intake side. So I'm putting the intake side on the front and although these connecting rods are reversible, you want to make sure they're aligned the same way with each of the pistons and rods. So slowly slide in the wrist pin, place the connecting rod in, slide the wrist pin through the connecting rod and through the other end of the piston. And there we go. Now we just need to lock this with another circ clip.
<sighs> Once you have the circlip in, you want to use one of the any old wrist pin. You want to just make sure it's all squared up in there. And there you have it guys, a completed piston and rod installation. And now we're just going to do the same steps with the remaining pistons and rods. You want to make sure you install the circlip, use a random wrist pin to ensure that the circlip is adequately seated. Once the circlip is seated, you want to apply assembly lube within the piston, generously apply it to both sides, Let's apply some lube to the wrist pin and the connecting rod, slide the wrist pin halfway through, place the connecting rod within the piston, slide the wrist pin through the connecting rod and remaining side of the piston. Now install the circlip. Start it on the notch and slowly round it through. Use a wrist pin to make sure the circlip is adequately seated. Alright guys, that is it. That completes <coughs> the install of the uh, wrist pin. I'll show you the piston right here. The upgraded wrist pin. It's connected to the connecting rod. I got the two circlips in there. The opening at the bottom. We have the, the larger crevices for the intake, smaller crevices for the exhaust. We've lined up all our dowels towards the intake side. And yeah, so on the next episode, we're gonna be showing you how to clock the piston rings and install the pistons inside the block. We'll see you next time. Peace.